Hey, what's up, how's it? Aloha, it is me, Makani. Welcome to Culturize. This is a space where we get to share and learn and, and teach culture because I truly believe if we learn a little bit about somebody's culture, uh, we're, we're all going to get along a little bit better. And now, um, all kinds of cultures, of course, here in Hawaii, Hawaii is our host culture, and we are always taught about protocol. Whenever we start things important, uh, we, we have to start, of course, with protocol, and uh, we do it this way. Kumai kia nue nue bia uitale ra Kauna manu itahiti Ihikane akekegi maku ahai Alohai, alohai, alohai Mahalo, 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 mahalo. And that is how we uh, practice our protocol but that was protocol I have to ask you this because um, in front of me is he's from the order of Kamehameha the royal order of Kamehameha before we get into conversation I want to converse about this to offer a gift to Ali'i or Chief Line or somebody of the royal how would what would I I should actually be on my knees if if was Kavaka I mean even today yeah or correct me if I'm wrong yeah if you were uh, presenting to Ali mm -hmm. yeah you shouldn't be higher than Dali himself so it should but, be you know, even even the whole kupu above me but yet below the yeah chief. Dali himself right wow. see not but, a lot of people realize that like they'll they'll just do protocols and because it's very important to know who you're presenting to. Right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, my friends, I, I'm humbled. I'm privileged. Uh, Arthur Ayu, uh, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, um, Royal Order of Kamehameha. Uh, we're going to eventually get to that. But, uh, of course, local protocol. W where do you went high school? <laughs> um, I have had the experience of being a lifer at Kamehameha. <laughs> lifer. Yeah. Ding, one yeah. more. We, we're keeping track so far. Michelle, how much do we have already? We've come almost every, if you've been watching Culture Eyes, man, Kamehameha School is racking up points as far as guest. Me and my classmate from Lahaina Luna, two so far. <laughs> two, but Kamehameha, a lifer. Yep. Pretty rare. Pretty rare. So now Kamehameha School, where, where was home? Where did you grow up? So I was raised up on... The other heights mm -hmm. of St. Louis. The other heights, I like that. Oh, so that was kind of, was that weird? You're growing up in the heights where St. Louis is, but you would go all the way to the other Mauna? Or right. the, the <laughs> yeah, people just naturally thought since I lived at St. Louis Heights, I would go to St. Louis. But. Knowledge of Kamehameha, Nohoana, Kalaipohaku, right? Um, so you grew up, up up on the top? Halfway. Halfway, halfway up. up. What, was, what was that like? Um, what, what's the what's the name of of that? Uh, oh, Kalaipohaku is that is Kalaipohaku that yeah. entire area. Mm, okay, Kalaipohaku and Vaahila are the okay. Hawaiian names places for for that area. Okay, so not St. Louis Heights. Not what what what, is they, what else do they call it? St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's well, Kanalugi, right? They there you go. There you go. Um, ethnic backgrounds for you. So Hawaiian, mm -hmm. Chinese. Mm -hmm. And then Caucasian, okay. and in the Caucasian, there's a mixture of Scottish and Italian. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. In the household, uh, were you privileged enough to grow up with Makua and um, grandparents, Tutu, or vice, or which, or all? So the house up at uh, St. Louis Heights mm -hmm. actually was my grandparents mm -hmm. on my mother's side. So I did have um, grandfather, grandmother, on my mom's side, two parents. I have a younger brother and then two younger sisters. So you got to, so what in the household, what was more dominant as far as ethnicities go with cultural practices? Was it the Hawaiian side, the Chinese side, or was it all? Well, it's mostly just the Hawaiian side. Mm. Yeah, it was the Hawaiian side. What kind of things do you remember growing up in the household that, that was cultural practices? Cultural practices. So, um, my grandparents were faithful members at Kwai Hao Church, mm. which are Kalavina okay. Protestant. Mm -hmm. But when my mom married my dad, she actually converted to be a Catholic. So I was raised with the Catholic 
sacraments. Wow. But on Sunday mornings, because uh-huh. it was that grandparent's house, it would be Kwaha'o Church. We were, interesting, interesting. So the blending of the Protestant and the Catholic, basically same God, one God. Wow. Yeah. yeah. If you're joining us, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, uh, uh, hit the notification button, subscribe. We're talking story with uh, Arthur Ayu. We're going to get into the royal order of Kamehameha, but we also want to get into his background in culture, Ike and Mana'o, right here on Culturized. Bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive the Star Advertiser digital full access subscription for just $9.95 per month. Go to StarAdvertiser.com and click on subscribe. Use the code A High Thing. Bank of Hawaii, welcome to tomorrow. Member FDIC. Hey, thanks a lot for joining us. Welcome back to Culturize. We are sitting with, you know, I, I'll just be honest with you. As, as Because in my head, I know you're from the Royal Order. I literally want to sit on the ground right now. And, but that's just how you're supposed to. But we're, we're going to continue on. So um, growing up in, in uh, Kalai Pohaku and, and growing up with grandparents and parents, um, the religious side very strong, as you said. Um, was it... Th- did you see that? Because a lot of times Hawaiians have difficulty in culture and religion, right? Being a Hawaiian and being religious. Um, was it like that? But it, or was it just every day for you? No, it was basically every day um, because there was a strong Christian side. Mm-hmm. Yeah? But my grandparents, they, would, they, they spoke Hawaiian, but they would never speak well, to me. They, but be, yeah, yeah, amongst each other, you know, kind of alongside, oh, we don't want to know what, we don't want the KC to know <laughs> what we're talking about, so. Yeah. Um, but my interest in Hawaiian culture was mm. day to day because mm. I would hear the snippets of what they were talking about. So your kilo skills were like, hmm, watching, listening, hearing, right. right? Yeah, and then the Hawaiian culture side didn't kick in until I was actually at school. And then when I actually started to take Hawaiian language, how, how old were you at the time? So I was in high school. It wasn't until high school. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I, I have. I was going to ask you this question. I ask everybody. So is can you? Is it fair to say that it's it's a weird question? But is that when you realized you were Kanaka? No. No. Oh, you know yeah. From, right. Okay. Kamehameha. Right. It's basically it was always yeah. Okay. Um, they would have makahiki and but grandma and grandpa would never speak. Wow. Until I learned how to speak. Wow, interesting. And so when I started to ask them uh-huh. things and in Hawaiian, uh-huh. then then they would talk. Was it, did they, because th- my experience, I, w- I would a little to my grandfather and he would look at me like this. Huh? <laughs> was it like that? Because now there was a time where l- when you learn Hawaiian language in, in contemporary time was a little bit, or maybe a little bit different, very different from grandparents' time. Oh, yeah, because it was book, book Hawaiian, right? <laughs> so did they yeah. look at you with a tilted head? They had to <laughs> listen and then, oh, I, I kind of know what you're saying, but yeah. And, but yeah, my, they my, just appreciated that I was speaking. My, yeah, see, I, was, I never knew if my grandfather appreciated it or he was just mocking me. Because <laughs> he, what are you talking about? <laughs> What so language is? What was one of the things? Was it language or what other cultural practices or Namea Hawaii that you had pili to first? Was it hula? Was it language? Music? In high school, beside the language, mm-hmm. there was um, the singing kamehameha, mm-hmm. but then there was also the hula. Mm. Yeah, um, back in that day, there was Robert Casimiro. There was Wayne Chang. There was Lane Alahaini. And then that was also the beginning times of um, Holo'ua Stender. Wow. So the foundations of that hula, and that was through Concert Glee. Yeah. You know. That was, so th- I always think you know, hula, hula comes in these waves, yeah, these transitions of the, the Holo'ua. You were in that. You were in that time that hula started. And, and back then, was there a lot of hula kane? A lot of males dancing. There was. Wow. There was. That was just about when uh, Robert yeah. with his uh, Halona Kamale. That's so yeah. crazy. Now, you've growing up in the culture with grandparents and parents in a, a life at Kamehameha School, um, I want to, Royal Order of Kamehameha, how, how, 
how did you get involved in that and or when that was actually uh, a story in itself mm -hmm. so um I was always active in hula, mm -hmm. and then we actually had um, a musician, uh, Uncle Eddie Akana, mm. and he would play music for a halal, and then um, he would always tell me, Arthur, I have this group that I think you'd be really good at and really interested in, so I want you to come join. And I kept saying, yeah, but you know, Uncle Eddie, I'm so busy mm -hmm. with work, uh -huh. with hula, you know, I don't have any extra time. But he said, no, 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 I want you, I want you, I want you. And this was just about 2004. I had a, uh, another good friend that out of the blue, he asked me, hey, I heard, I, I want to become a member of the Royal Order of Kamehameha. You know how? Oh, I said, hold that thought. I like <laughs> that because people, I would get that question too. And I have no, I, they're like, hey, how are you join the Royal Order? I'm like, I don't think you join. I think you just have to be. If you're joining us on Culturized, uh, we are talking about the Royal Order of Kamehameha. Uh, some of you seen them, some of you may know them, but we're going to find out just how Arthur got involved and what they're about on Culturized. This show is sponsored by Hawaiian Telcom, Hawaii's technology leader. For all your money needs, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is here for you. Visit HiFiCU.com. That's HiFi, letter C, letter U, dot com. Mahalo for joining us. Welcome back to Culturized Royal Order of Kamehameha. I've got that question before. Um, eh, I like, how do you get into the Royal Order? Now, we just heard your story, and your friend had asked you what had happened. So after he asked me, I went to go see Uncle Eddie. I said, Uncle Eddie, so, okay, now I'm interested. <laughs> I have someone so, else, <laughs> right, that wants to come with me. So he said, okay, you're going to show up on this night of the week uh -huh. at 6 o'clock, and this is what you have to wear, and then I'll see you there. So I told my friend, okay, this is the date. This is what we got to wear. This is what time, where we got to be. I'll see you there. <laughs> so the date, the time came, only I showed up. <laughs> Okay, so I'm, I'm going to uh, jump in that story. And when Uncle told you this is what you got to wear, what would, because in my head, and a lot of people know that black suit, right? So basically, uh, it was. So uh, you actually black had, suit. even before you, just to the meeting, you had to use a black suit. Yeah, we, wow. had, to, we had to come in the white long sleeve shirt, black pants, black wow. shoes, black socks. Yeah. And then from there, what happened? So um, basically, you're invited mm. to, to join. I mean, you can express an right. interest, but then you're invited and you're sponsored in. So very traditional, very yep. traditional. Okay. Yep. Do do you have to be of blue blood? Do you have to be of chiefly line? No, not chiefly line. You mm -hmm. just have to be right now. You have to have Hawaiian mm -hmm. blood. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of people think, and then basically we want you to be able to trace your genealogy back. A couple of generations. Do you have to do that before you're I even invited or before you're accepted? Well, yeah. Well, actually, wow. yeah, there's a trial period. Um, but I uh, like that. Yeah. A, tri a trial yeah. period. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to see if you're good enough. Yeah. Um, the ro so, so there's you in your black suit and you show up and there's, and now there's a lot of order. And the hierarchy of that always amazes me because it's very, very close or even as was in Kavakahiko, right, as the hierarchy goes. That's one of the purposes of the mm -hmm. Royal Order. We basically try to preserve and perpetuate mm -hmm. the ancient chiefly tradition wow. of Hawaii. In, in, in when it comes to the Royal Order, who, who would be at the very top? What, what is the, the Hawaiian word for the person? Of, of course, Ali'i Nui or is it? It's Ali'i Nui. Okay. Yeah. So in modern terms, w would we would we have a mo'i in in the royal order, or would just start from ali'i nui because we represent? So it, if it was the true royal order of mm -hmm. Kamehameha, the ali'i nui would be the mo'i. Mm -hmm. It would be the king, and okay. there would be basically no question about that because that is who the head of the order is. So the, the, the purpose, I, I, I love that the purpose is to perpetuate the, tr the chiefly traditions. Now, when after the meeting, were you all like, yes, I want to do this? Or was it, ooh, what, what was your mana'o? 
it it I was interested. There was mm. interest. Uh, there was interest, and but there was still a sense of uncertainty mm. in what was what was happening. Mm-hmm. But no, oh, uh, I went back and I kept going back, and that was two thousand and four. When did the because uh, there's a lot of orders, and 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 I don't think people realize what orders really are, right? Hawaii, in and of itself, we've compared to the rest of the world, we've had orders for thousands, uh, years, hundreds, hundreds of years. Yeah. So the Royal Order mm-hmm. of Kamehameha is actually recognized as the first order in the Hawaiian Kingdom. Wow. Yeah. So it was founded by Kamehameha V, mm-hmm. April eleventh, eighteen sixty-five, and it was named Kamehameha in honor of his grandfather. Mm-hmm. So this is basically an order of merit. Ah, and I basically see. a fraternity of knights. Okay. Now, did did they? Now, the, the, did that mimic what, what would be the English or, or the British? European? The European, okay. yeah, the European, yeah. The see, and and that's what always blows me away about our our monarchs and our ali'i. That even at that time, what eighteen? What did you say? Eighteen sixty. Eighteen sixty-five. So they knew. They looked at other countries, and it was like. This is what we're going to do because we are a monarch. If you want to get more into the royal order of uh, Kamehameha, I, I, my mind is blown right now because I see them, I respect them, but we're, we're diving into just how you become one and what their whole purpose is. Uh, that's what we, you have any questions? Comment down below, hit the notification bell, subscribe. Uh, this is what we do. We talk and we share and we learn. And I can't be more humbled to be talking about the culture of the royal order of Kamehameha right here in Culturized. Culturize, brought to you by Beachside Roofing, the leaders. Poncho Solar is specialized in providing energy solutions throughout Hawaii since 1987. Call us at 808-773-7384. Mahalo for joining us. We are sitting with Arthur Ayu, uh, Royal Order of Kamehameha. Uh, wow. I'm the first order in Hawaii. And I, I like how it, it just made me really, it's an order of merit. Um, but I really, really, I love the foresight of our ali'i because they thought, okay, we're going to take this English and this European concept, but we're going to make it Kanaka. We're going to make it Hawaiian. Um, so it started then, and it was just, it was just a fraternity. And how long, I can't even do the math right now. How long has it been? 1860-something, what is that? 200 years? I don't know. <laughs> no, not quite. Almost, I mean, almost yeah. there, but it's going to go on. Um, in the royal order, did it always start with the black suit and ahuula? Uh, was that always the attire? No, no. Originally, mm-hmm. the order, you will see like photos of, well, the order itself is like a, a, a Maltese cross. Right. And you'll see um, Latk. Um, Kamehameha with, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. with it on his left side mm-hmm. in his black suit. Um, the the Ahuula tradition didn't mm-hmm. come in until later, but um, it's just that we we claim our beginnings mm-hmm. with Kamehameha V. Okay. And then um, Kalakaua continues it, then he establishes his own orders, and then even Lili'uokalani, and then overthrow. We go underground. Wow. Yeah. Because um, the then government uh, thought that yeah. we were a threat. Which is I which I think is actually a good thing. When they can look at a, an order of, of natives and eh, hey, watch these guys up. Huh? <laughs> so meeting underground, so meetings and whatnot was away from the public eye. Yeah, and then, you know, people say that it then it became a secret society. Ah, uh, yeah. that's, yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, and then the history turns to um, the early 1900s, 1902, 1903 with Prince Cujillo. Mm. And when Prince Cujillo, he reestablishes the royal order. He brings it up on, uh, from underground. And that reestablishment happened like on the evening of June 10th. The night before Kamehameha Day, 1902, Kamehameha does a midnight torchlight ceremony at Kamehameha statue. No and way. he proclaims that the royal order is no longer underground. What? And yeah, so, and then that 
that establishes basically the modern era of the world order. Wow. So if you look in the archives, then you will start to see um, Prince Kuhio, and then mm. he is um, elected as the first, Ali'i Aimoku as the mm. title, which is the highest title at that time, and basically the same title that I hold for Hawaii Chapter 1. Yeah. And so um, then it moves through, and then they start establishing different chapters throughout mm -hmm. the islands. So. Honolulu is the first one. Mm -hmm. Then they move to Hilo, mm -hmm. then Kauai, then to Maui, and then Molokai. And then they start to establish a total of 10. There's a total of mm -hmm. 10 in number, but nine active. So here on Oahu, we have three chapters. Basically, um, number one takes care of Honolulu. Um, we have one that takes care of Ko'olau. And then the, the third chapter takes care of everything outside of Honolulu and Ko'olau. Hawaii Island has four, Maui, Kauai. Wow. So you're, you're sitting like there at, at pretty much the Ta'ali Aimoku. Uh, now, do you have to oversee other chapters or just yours? No, just uh, the Aimokus will oversee just their own chapter. That's, that's, that's heavy kuleana, yeah. right? Um, Royal Order of Kamehameha. I, 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 my mind is blown. There's all these questions that are, that are coming to me now. Um, when the Ahu'ula started, um, did you have to make your own? Um, no, no, actually, no. Because they're actually made out of velvet okay. yeah, and satin. But hey, the current Ali Nui, uh, Ali Kadeshe out of Kona, um, he actually has been uh, crafting feather Ahu'ula. I want to get into that. We're going to get into it on an extended version. Uh, go to our YouTube page, hit the notification bell, subscribe. Royal Order of Kamehameha, mahalo for being here. We're going to keep him and talk some more on Culturized. <music>Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha. Welcome to Culture Rise. If you're joining us on YouTube, this is the extended version. If uh, you caught the previous part uh, on KKI 50, thank you so much for doing that. We're talking about the culture of the Royal Order of Kamehameha. Uh, a lot of times you see them, a lot of, a lot of uh, Native Hawaiian events throughout Hawaii. Um, they are the gentlemen in the black suits, the ahu'ula. Um, and you know it's them, not only because of the way they dress, because the the regalness, the ano about the royal order is till this day, as even as a, I remember being a, a young uh, child and you, you would see the order and I'd always think, and then like that's, that's as close as you're going to get to Ali'i. That's like that wool, right? And I remember <laughs> you would always be somewhere at a parade and, and the auntie or the uncle or the mom and they push you on the side. They're coming, they're coming, <laughs> right? Um, just the regalia of the black suits, the ahu'ula, and we left off and, and um, they're actually making a traditional one right now with feathers. So, um, yeah, so the wow. current Ali'i uh -huh. Nui, Ali mm -hmm. um he has initiated um, this program with the, with, the, um, with the Royal Order. Mm -hmm. And um, we, actually have what we have short shoulder okay. capes and designate them as officer capes so you can okay. actually you read it's my like mind. the insignia mm -hmm. of what office you hold ah. um, so we have been fortunate enough to uh, engage um, Kumuhulu mm. uh, Rick San Nicholas mm -hmm. um, to come and teach some of our members in the purpose of perpetuating our ancient traditions. Wow. And um, actually handcrafting feather <laughs> ahu'ula. So um, they're, 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 it's a journey that's uh -huh. just being embarked on now. It's Th fairly new. The reason why I shake my head if you're joining us, if, if you've ever worked with any type of hulu, whether it's a lay hulu, whether it's, it's the, you cannot think about anything else <laughs> but yeah. that hulu in your hand. Um, before we get into the making of it, I, I want to go back to the, the length of the ahula, right? And you were talking about how they determine, and that's a very traditional thing as well because sim symbols and, and, and regatta really determined where you sat in the, the, the line. 
So if it's to the shoulder, you're an officer? So basically, yeah. Um, there's officer capes, mm -hmm. and those would be just short shoulder capes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for the most part, those are not typically worn out in public. Interesting. Okay. Um, but that would be an internal mm. sign of what our offices are. There are only mm -hmm. there are certain mm -hmm. um, ali'i mm. uh, or officers that will wear those capes, those short capes in public. Other than that, you would probably see the men in either a short red, full red mm -hmm. cape. Mm -hmm. um, those are designated as our mamo. They're not quite yet elevated mm -hmm. to the ali'i status yet. And then uh, as an ali'i, you, you will see, which is more common, a uh, yellow cape that will be mm. wrist, right, right, right. right down to your wrist. Wow. I, see, I, I, I love the, the visual um, of the regalia of, of just Native Hawaiians and, and the order and, and just in general, because you knew you didn't have to say a word. You didn't have to say anything. I can just look at you and know how I'm going to address you. How I'm go even if I'm going to address you, right? And how I approach you, and sometimes I think in in today's contemporary society we forget that. Sometimes we just approach people when you know what I mean. It's it's like even as some people I, they say, I just had this conversation. In fact, it's funny you say that. Um, somebody was asking me that they wanted to get in touch with a kupuna who is a kahu, um, and they said well, I said well you know what to do. They said no I don't. I said, what do you mean you don't know what to do? I said, take a whole kupu, go to their house, right? Talk story. Don't talk about what you're going to talk about. Just talk story. Oh, I, oh for, I was just going to call them. I, don't call them. Please don't call them, right? But we do. We forget. We forget. But I think it's brilliant that, that our traditions gave us an opportunity to know how I'm going to approach you or if I should approach you, right? But in these days, you know, as long as you do it respectfully, mm. yeah. Okay. As long as you move forward with respect, yeah. Mm, I like that. I like that. Um, are there traditions with the royal order that that you that you teach if you're already in the order, or do you already have to know, right? Uh, are there traditions that, like we're talking about the ahuula making? Now, are, are all of you going to be required to do that? We don't know. Like I say, it, <laughs> it's it's brand new. It, it's. It's actually only wow. months, months old, uh, but it's something, it's a new venture uh, that we're taking on. But um, traditionally, uh -huh. so the Royal Order of Kamehameha, mm -hmm. back to Kamehameha V, mm -hmm. yeah, is responsible for actually um, taking care and perpetuating Kamehameha Day. That's right. Yeah. So that's where you and I also have another connection. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Kamehameha Day has been the longest running cultural event or festival, right? In in even if you include us now in in the Americas, but it's it's a long running Native celebration. Yeah, in fact, 2022 mm -hmm. will be the 150th anniversary of the Kamehameha Day holiday. Hundred. That's just if, the holiday. Just the holiday. Yeah. So actually. In 1871, mm -hmm. so 150 years this year, mm -hmm. Kamehameha V established the holiday. Ah. And he said June 11th will be Kamehameha Day. Because it started off um, that they wanted to celebrate his birthday. Oh, that's Kamehameha right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? In December 11th. Mm -hmm. But Kamehameha said, no, he don't want to do that. <laughs> I love that. So the, one of the stories he pushed. He wanted to do a holiday uh -huh. in honor of his grandfather, Kamehameha mm. I, and selected, we say, the farthest date away from his birthday, which is June 11th. That's so funny. He's yeah. like, no, don't and celebrate my birthday on yep. the day. Find a further date. And so that's what became Kamehameha Day today. Yes. Unreal. And it, I'm, I'm sad. It's, it's Kaumaha that the, the last, it's been two years now, yeah, that we couldn't. Yeah. It, it, it was rough. It's been virtual. Yeah, I I, um, I was fortunate enough um, to be given some kuleana. Gosh, I, oof, I, whoa, 10? <laughs> Over 10 years? I didn't realize. Um, with the Kamehameha float, with the uh, kia'i, um, or the kipu'upu'u, as, as we... I always have to remind people. I said, we are not them. We're just portraying them, right? Um, and here's something else that's funny is because... Um, 
it's it's we take it really seriously so we have some i it's like the order we get some people call hey i'm kind of like being you guys float because i go gym oh okay right I was like, there's, there's a whole thing that you have to do, we have to do before you, you get there. Um, and it's always funny because a lot of people don't realize those things. And that's why I love a part of what I do for those guys is they have to go research the royal order. Because I always tell them, we're going to be right next to them. We are nobody. <laughs> we protect them, right? <laughs> because then, and then they get it. They're like, oh, okay. And... So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that by 20, what is next year, 2023, 20, we get to have the parade. Yeah, so no, actually the idea is hopefully by 2022, they'll, there's going to be some kind of celebration. Yeah, Because we, we still, I mean, we still did the, the draping, right? The lay draping still mm -hmm. happened. Okay, okay. Yeah. And you guys, who's, is it all the chapters that have to show up? Or who's in charge of that Kamehameha statue? So actually, the basically all the Kamehameha statues fall mm -hmm. under the purview of the King Kamehameha Celebration Commission, mm. yeah. and that's actually state. But the representatives, okay, yeah. So we have the four uh, uh, Royal Hawaiian Benevolent Societies, which are the Royal Order of Kamehameha, Ahahui Kaahumanu, mm -hmm. Haleona Aliu Hawaii and Daughters and Sons of Hawaiian Warriors Mama Kakawa, mm. along with other representatives, yeah, make up the commission to organize the celebration events. Is, is there a certain age to, to be on those, to be on the royal order? So to belong to the royal order is 18 years. Oh, old. okay, okay. Yeah. It was, you know, I was say, you know, sometimes our elders, they got a certain age, we don't know nothing yet, right? <laughs> Uh, so we are talking about the Royal Order of Kamehameha. If you're joining us on YouTube, um, hit the subscribe, uh, hit the subscribe and the notification bell. Comment down below if you want to, you want to find out more about what the Royal Order does. Um, it's always because I don't ask if you can be on it, right? You'll be invited if your time will come. But mahalo, mahalo, mahalo for being here. Thank you so much for making time. Um, and hopefully we get to see each other again for Kamehameha Celebration. Um, thank you for all your iki and all your manao that you've shared with us. And I definitely want to bring you back, Bombay, because we got to talk hula. <laughs> Arthur, are you, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for joining us. This is Culturized, the Royal Order of Kamehameha. Mm -hmm.